It's been five years since a small double-A studio called Spiders made their mark on the RPG world with the release of Greedfall, a well-received title that sold over one million copies and started a promising new franchise. With the sequel about to hit early access in September, I decided to revisit this game and see if it's still worth playing today. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. By the end of this spoiler-free review, you'll have a good idea of what Greedfall is all about and whether it's worth your time today. So without further ado, let's buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and dive into the world of Greedfall. So let's start off by talking about what Greedfall is and why it was so successful when it came out back in 2019. Greedfall is a single-player, story-driven action RPG inspired by classic Bioware titles. It's a fantasy game with a unique twist compared to the typical medieval Europe-inspired settings we are used to. Greedfall blends fantasy with a colonial America-style setting, showcasing not only magic and swords, but 17th century technology such as flintlock firearms. It also highlights a power struggle and conflict between the native tribes and three foreign powers who are settling in their homeland, which leads to interesting storytelling and choices for the player to make. I believe a big part of why Greedfall was so commercially and critically successful at the time is that the single-player RPG space was kind of on life support. Bethesda and Bioware had run their reputations into the gutter with Fallout 76 and Anthem and the massively hyped Cyberpunk 2077 was still over a year away. So single-player RPG fans didn't have a lot of options if they wanted to dive into a new game, which allowed Greedfall to capitalize on the void in the RPG space. Side note, another game that got a similar buff to sales and reputation was The Outer Worlds. It's a decent game, but compared to the disastrous launch of Fallout 76, The Outer Worlds looked like a masterpiece, despite being basically an 8 out of 10 game. At the time, Spider's CEO Jahan Russo said that her team sought to fill the void in the RPG space left behind by Bioware whose recent titles Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem left fans massively disappointed. We are creating them now not to replace Bioware, but to fill the void in some ways, Rousseau said. We can't really compare. We don't have the same size teams and budget, but we really try to continue creating games we love. We hope that players will like it, and that players that enjoyed playing story-driven RPGs, like the games from Bioware, will enjoy playing Greedfall. This marketing and juxtaposition to Bioware paid off big time for Greedfall, as many reviewers drew direct comparisons to games like Dragon Age. Greedfall, their goal, the developers stated, was to fill the void that Bioware has left as they switched over to games like Anthem and Dragon Age Inquisition. For me personally, when I see someone in the AA genre saying, yeah, we're looking to fill some of that void that Bioware is leaving, I think that's not only an ambitious goal, but I think it's an admirable and achievable one. But after playing for 20 hours, I can definitely say that this game does fill that void Bioware left behind in a lot of ways. There aren't many games that can scratch the single-player RPG itch right now, barring older games and franchises like The Witcher or Dragon Age. Greedfall looked like it might fill that void, and in some ways it does, but in others it falls massively short and leaves me wondering how exactly it is being spoken of so highly at the moment. The big question is, does Greedfall really measure up to classic Bioware titles like Mass Effect, Dragon Age, Baldur's Gate, and Knights of the Old Republic? Eh, not really. This does not mean that you shouldn't play Greedfall, just that you should manage your expectations before diving into your first playthrough. Also, if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more RPG content like this, then be sure to hit like and subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more videos just like this one. Appreciate you, dude. While there are a lot of charming elements about Greedfall and the Bioware inspiration is clear, especially when looking at quest choices, companions, romance, and storytelling, I can't help but notice that Greedfall is a pale imitation of the OG Bioware titles us RPG fans know and love. And this is evident right off the bat when we dive into the character creator. The customizable protagonist of Greedfall is Desarde, a noble person and legate of the merchant congregation. You can play as a male or female and have limited slider options for adjusting things like face, hair, eyes, etc. To be honest, I found the character creator quite lacking in this game. 
there are only eight faces to choose from for male characters. Hell, you can't even pick a first name for your character like you would in Mass Effect. Even if NPCs in the game never refer to my chosen character name, I still like having that option from a role-playing perspective, so its absence is noticeable to me. Your character is voiced, but unfortunately the voice acting for Desarde is monotone and emotionless 90% of the time. This will be relevant when we discuss romance later in the video. I guess they were going for a classic European elite personality, representing the strict, cold, dispassionate etiquette of 17th century nobility. Also, I gotta stick a little rant in here about the UI for controllers on the Steam version of Greedfall because I prefer playing this game with a controller. And for some reason, there is no UI support for PlayStation controllers, only Xbox ones. Which makes no sense to me because this game had a PS4 release too. So why aren't the PlayStation button inputs available in the PC version? The old Assassin's Creed games have a similar problem. I'll never understand why devs do this. There are only two major consoles to account for, maybe three if you count Nintendo Switch, so why can't you have the PlayStation button inputs available for people who want to play the Steam version with a PS4 controller? Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. So let's dive into the combat of Greedfall. This game sets itself apart from the deluge of medieval fantasy games because of the colonial era inspiration. So in addition to sword and board and magical playstyles, you've also got guns and traps to work with. There are three primary build categories you can choose from in Greedfall. Warrior is built around blades and blunt weapons. Technical is centered on guns and traps. And magic, well, that one's obvious now, isn't it? Now you can dip into basically any of these build categories and spend skill points there if you want to. However, you definitely won't have enough skill points to max out everything, not even close. And if you spread yourself too thin, you may not unlock all the combat abilities for your primary build. In my first playthrough, I did a guns and melee build. So this time around, I decided to give magic a shot. And well, magic kind of sucks in this game, to be honest. Not because it isn't powerful, it's just that the spells are pretty boring. Playing a mage in Greedfall is only one or two steps above that FF7 Rebirth quest where you drag a tin can to lure chickens into a coop. You've got some basic spells that you can use by equipping a magical ring. There are a couple of magical projectiles and a magical melee attack, none of which feel particularly interesting to use. As for your main spells, you have Stasis, which freezes an enemy in place, Storm, which does the same thing but AoE, and Shadow Burst, which deals AoE damage. You also get a Shield and Lightning Dash ability. But where are all the cool spells, man? Where are the fireballs and ice walls and stuff like that? Sure, you can do amazing crowd control and deal decent damage as a mage in Greedfall, but you got no style points. Another drawback of this playstyle is that you'll constantly need to drink potions to keep spamming your spells. Seriously, you'll be knocking back magic potions like a redneck chugging Bud Light on the 4th of July. The combat in this game also has a janky feel to it that I can't quite put my finger on. I don't know if it's the animations or the hitboxes, but something about the overall game feel of the combat just seems rough around the edges. There is a bit of strategy to the combat as well, both because of your companions, which can cover weaknesses in your own build, and the tactical pause menu, which allows you to pause combat at any time to queue up different items and abilities. This was a decent first draft of an action RPG system with tactical elements, but I think a lot of fans wanted to see improvements to the system. But now that Spiders has decided to take a totally different approach in Greedfall 2 by switching to real-time with pause combat similar to Dragon Age Origins. I guess we'll never get to see that beefed up action RPG system from them. One other double-edged sword about Greedfall is the overall progression of your character. Greedfall is quite stingy with talent and attribute points. Talents are things like charisma, lockpicking, and science, which will often be used as skill checks for solving certain quest objectives or accessing loot you couldn't otherwise get. Attributes will determine damage output and gear restrictions. For instance, mages will want to heavily invest in mental power and willpower to boost magical damage and be able to equip the best magical bling. On the one hand, having these restrictions makes your build choices more meaningful since the Sarde can't be good at everything. On the other hand, these restrictions feel a bit arbitrary and annoying at times, especially when you're asked to perform a talent check for very important quests with things like craftsmanship. 
Personally, I recommend investing points into charisma and craftsmanship. You can get bonuses to science, charisma, and lockpicking with armor and armor upgrades, but I never found any gear that boosted craftsmanship, which I needed to complete the Siora romance arc. More on that later. The most obvious imprint of Bioware inspiration in Greedfall is with the companions and romance arcs, but unfortunately the writing quality just doesn't hit the same as OG Bioware. Much like Dragon Age, you will progress companion conversations and story arcs by speaking to them at the party camp. But I ended up encountering a bug where this loading screen message would be displayed 100% of the time when I was in the party camp, which definitely kills the conversational immersion, especially with romance. Thankfully, you can have these conversations at Desarde's house as well, so that was my workaround. I would have to say my favorite companions were Kurt and Siora. Kurt in particular had one of the most memorable quest lines in this game, which still stuck with me over four years after my first playthrough of Greedfall. As for romance, the devs also copied that classic Bioware blueprint. So if you're looking for a dating sim within your RPG experience, then you're in luck because four of the companions can be romanced. In my first playthrough, Desarde formed a relationship with Afra. So this time I decided to go native if you know what I'm saying. If you want to go for the Siora romance like me, then you gotta be patient, because her last personal quests don't unlock until like two thirds of the way through the main story. When I finally got to the apex of the romantic tension, I had to reload a save because I ended up choosing the wrong dialogue option and landing in the friend zone. Art imitates life, you blew it! But the most jarring thing about the romance in Greedfall is the robotic, emotionless voice acting for the protagonist. And if you feel the same way, I would love to spend some time alone with you. I would love that too. Meet me outside my room the next time we're at the house. I will be there. I hope so. Because I love you too, Siora. I love you, Siora. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, baby girl. Bro, show a little affection. You got a girlfriend now. At least be a little bit excited about it. For me, the best part of Greedfall were the quests. If you're a quest enjoyer, then Greedfall will be a satisfying experience. Many quests have unexpected twists and turns, and your choices can make a difference on the plot in both main and side quests. For instance, while investigating the culprits behind a theft of sacred relics, if you end up sparing the son of the nated village healer, then she will help you heal a Telame priest in a later quest. There are also multiple endings to the game depending on your choices, and your decisions will also make a major impact on your faction reputation, which can have consequences in other areas of the game. I quite enjoyed the lore of the factions in this game, which draw inspiration from real world societies. Teleme is a sort of blend between puritanical Christianity and the Spanish Inquisition. They seek to convert people to the enlightened path and are proficient in the use of magic. The Bridge Alliance is basically a secular Islamic society with a focus on science and technology, which is why many bridge members wield firearms and technical abilities. The Bridge Alliance and Teleme are currently at war. The Merchant Congregation, which Desarde is a part of, is a sort of neutral nation that tries to maintain good relations with all nations for the purposes of promoting commerce and trade. And then there are the native tribes who have strong ties to nature and have rough relations with the colonizing nations who are often mistreating them and taking their land away. There are a couple of other factions too, like the Coin Guard and the Knots. I really enjoyed the storytelling of the quests as well, and found myself continuing to play more side quests long after I had enough footage for this review. The only downside to questing in Greedfall is that the map exploration is pretty terrible. There is a ton of backtracking and unnecessary invisible walls in the semi-open zones you explore throughout the world. And you can only fast travel from campsites or cities, which means you'll end up running through a lot of empty space with very few enemies or sites of interest while you're completing quests. So at the end of the day, do I recommend playing Greedfall in this economy? Yes, but that comes with a big caveat. While I do find this game charming, there are a lot of RPGs that I would rather play over Greedfall. And unless you've already played most of the other great RPGs, there are other games that I would recommend before this one. For example, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Fallout 4, any game in the Dragon Age series, including DA2. The Mass Effect Trilogy, Elden Ring, Hogwarts Legacy, The Witcher 3, Dragon's Dogma 1 and 2, Pathfinder Kingmaker, and the list goes on, but you get the point. 
Now you might be thinking, it's not fair to compare Greedfall to some of those games, since a lot of the games you mentioned are AAA titles. And while I do think it's fair to cut indie devs and AA studios some slack, when it comes to critiquing their gameplay systems, character models, etc., at the end of the day, there are a lot of great games competing for your time and money. If you play a game that's rougher around the edges, there is an opportunity cost for that. You could be playing a more polished game. There are so many games out there, especially in the RPG space, and if you're a casual gamer, you can pretty much spend all your time playing masterpieces. So why waste time on a 7 out of 10 game? I am curious to see what Spiders will do with the Greedfall franchise moving forward, because the first game provided a strong foundation that they can iterate upon. However, they did run into a bit of controversy with their existing fanbase after showcasing Greedfall 2's combat system. Rather than expanding upon and improving the action RPG system of the first game, Spiders decided to pivot to an entirely new style of fighting called real-time with pause strategy combat. Games like Dragon Age Origins, the original Baldur's Gate games, and Pathfinder Kingmaker come to mind. I am excited to see what Spiders will do with Greedfall 2, and we'll get a first-hand experience of this when the Early Access version launches in late September. Spiders decided to do Early Access for Greedfall 2 to get direct feedback from the community on the combat system, since this is their first attempt at making this style of game. So for players who are looking for a spiritual successor to Dragon Age Origins, which Bioware refuses to make, then perhaps Greedfall 2 can fill that void instead. But as for the original Greedfall, five years later, this game is really only worth playing for RPG fanatics who've already played most of the greats. So there you have it, my review of Greedfall in 2024. What do you think of this game? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG videos and reviews. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go. I love you, Siora. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, baby girl.